Hello everyone and welcome back to Flo's Corner. So in this video, I'm gonna be discussing how to do heel sticks on neonates and infants. So please stay tuned. So just a quick disclaimer, I am in no way former fashion and educator on heel sticks. I am telling you all by my experience, I am a certified phlebotomist and I have been doing this for quite some time. And I'm just gonna be educating you on pretty much how I perform heel sticks. So heel sticks are normally performed on newborn babies in the 72 hour time frame of their birth, premature infants and infants as well. It's normally just a small blood sample that is taken from the heel of a baby's foot. You can check for things like hemoglobin, glucose levels, hematocrit levels, your electrolyte levels, anything sometimes that may be imbalanced or just to at least find out if something is wrong and that we perform on these infants and these babies. Heel sticks are very crucial because you can detect conditions early on in a baby's lifetime before they become bigger and grow bigger and doing these heel sticks that shows these screenings actually can help before these conditions turn very serious or any disabilities that can actually develop later on in this child's life. When a mother gives birth to her baby, whether premature or not, normally the newborn screening test is something that is going to be performed before the baby is let go and ready to go home with its mother. The newborn screening test can check for things like immune disorders or blood disorders, hormonal disorders, things like that is what the newborn screening test is going to check for. It can also check up to 50 different diseases as well. Heel sticks are considered a capillary blood draw. So normally if you ever hear capillary blood draw, the first thing everyone goes to is normally in the finger. Normally for like a diabetic or someone like that, you notice that when they do capillary blood draws, they stick the lancet in the skin on the finger well we do the same thing with the heel stick for a baby or an infant normally heel sticks which is the capillary blood draw are only performed on infants younger than six months but it does depend on where you work at where they feel the age limit is but i know as a phlebotomist that normally a baby slash infant who is 21 pounds or bigger is no longer going to be able to get a heel stick on the actual heel. Normally the reason why they don't like to perform on six months and older is because the baby can start to stand up. Some of them can actually start walking. A lot of babies may put their feet in their mouths and stuff like that. So normally the heel sticks is only normally under six months and under. But like I said, to each clinic and to each office or hospital, there's a different requirement on what the age limit is for their heel sticks. And also it can be done, but it may not be recommended if they're six months and older. Also, finger sticks are never recommended for children under the age of one. So heel sticks can be used to perform newborn screening tests or they can be used to check other levels of the baby like I mentioned earlier in the video. And normally you'll use those little micro tainers, which is all for pediatrics. Some of them actually come with the scoop and some do not. But like I said, all of that you will learn in your phlebotomy educating journey. So heel sticks are performed on the plantar surface of the foot, which is going to be the heel part of the foot, which is the back of the foot. So the two sites is going to be the medial and the lateral sites, which is going to be normally the primary sites for a heel stick. The medial part will be the part where the big toe is, where the heel, and then the pinky toe on the bottom where the heel is, it's gonna be considered the lateral site. Always remember that both of these sites are always gonna be recommended for heel sticks that you are going to perform. The only other secondary site is going to be the part in the middle. You honestly are not gonna really go for this site in the beginning. Normally, if anything is happening with the baby or maybe you had tried both sites and you still weren't able to get a actual blood draw from there, then maybe the secondary site would be the next best thing. But always check back with your supervisor if you have any questions and before you go on. The back of the heel is not recommended for a heel draw, so please be careful of that. Also, you do not want to do a heel stick on the arch of the infant's foot or the dorsal part of the foot or any of the sides that's a little bit higher than the primary sites. You only want to do where your primary sites are and otherwise the secondary site if you need to. 
dimensions of your lancet should be no more than two millimeters. You can cause injury to the baby if it is any bigger and actually go deeper into the baby's foot, which can cause nerve damage or can even go straight to the bone. Lancets are normally placed on the skin and then you press the button and it will stick and poke the person. Normal lancets are normally retractable. So one stick and you throw it away into your biohazard container. And just also a quick FYI, always notice if the baby has any type of edema, any type of infection, or any heel injuries, please let your supervisor know or let the baby's patient care know as well. Never perform if you see any things like that. And also with your micro trainers, always remember the order of draw at all times. So for the newborn screening test, you're gonna see this paper. This paper normally is going to be normally what they all look like. They all are different in their own way with the information on the paperwork in a certain order from different that varies from different states but most of all it is all the same they're normally filled out by the healthcare provider or any part of the hospital staff about the information of this baby always make sure that that is filled out so you're going to see these little circles on the bottom these are going to indicate where your drops of blood is supposed to go so for the video demonstration, I am gonna be using my three-year-old little footsies in my video just to kind of give you guys a little demonstration on how to perform a heel. Just the FYI, he's like every other toddler out there. They're so squirmy because you know, they're kind of ticklish on the feet. So normally it is always recommended to use a heel warmer on your newborn or infant to at least warm up the puncture sites as much as you can. The same thing happens when we do are doing our regular blood draws. You want that area to be warmed up to actually get good veins and stuff like that. But obviously we're not really looking for veins because like I said, this is a capillary blood draw, but it is also very crucial for the body to be warmed up before you stick it with a needle. It can give an adequate amount of a good butt blood flow. Heel warmers look different from different companies or different on-site jobs that you have. These are what my heel warmers look like at my job. As you can see, it looks like a liquidy kind of solution in there. And then you see like this little metal disc. If you're ever unsure on how to use them, they do have the instructions on the front of the actual uh, heel warmer. So if you're not sure, you can always read what to do. I love how these infant little heel warmers actually come with this little strap. This strap actually helps to keep the heel warmer on the baby's foot while you're trying to gather all your supplies. The recommended time to keep on a heel warmer on a baby is between three to five minutes. So here I'm going to show you how to activate it. You're going to take this little metal disc and you're going to pop it kind of like a, a motion of turning it back or forth either way. And once it starts to activate, you can see that the solution turns from a liquid into like this like grainy, sandy solution. You will notice it warming up because you're going to feel the warmth from the solution in your hands. Make sure before performing this procedure that you have on your gloves. When you are going into the NICU or if you are going into the nursery, make sure that you are verifying your patient, which is always going to be the name and the date of birth. And most of the time it is always going to be the nurse or if you may have the patient in the room with the family or the mother and make sure that you verify, look at the baby's tags on the bottom of their ankle to verify that you have the right patient. After you finish activating the heel warmer and it's starting to warm up, now you're going to place that onto the baby's heel just like so. And then you're going to place the strap. You can move it as much as you want to get it tightened enough or if you need to make it loose enough as well. It's just a little sticky tab. It kind of makes it look like a little flip flop on the little baby. Now you're going to clean your area with a alcohol prep pad. You're going to wipe all around the medial, the lateral, and the middle part of the baby's heel, pretty much all of the heel. <laughs> now you're gonna place your lancet and you are going to place it onto the skin, whichever side that you decided to do, whether it was the lateral side or the medial side, and you're now going to place your lancet on the skin and you are going to press the button so that it can shoot.
It's up to your preference on which side you felt you felt comfortable on actually performing this. It's just a demonstration video. I'm not gonna be using a real lens set on my son. Normally babies may tend to flinch. They may tend to cry because there was something all of a sudden. It could feel a little bit painful to them. And however, but trust me, the procedure won't last long. You do not feel scared or do not feel like you're gonna stop because you heard the baby had jolted a little bit or maybe the baby has started to cry. Okay, and after you had now punctured the baby with the lancet, you're going to start to see a drop of blood come out. And normally you are going to wipe that first piece away. Wiping the first drop of blood away can help prevent hemolysis dilution of the specimen. Most of the time after you wipe the first drop away, it will start to already become another drop. And once it does that, now we're going to use the newborn screening, the little perforated circles that you see at the bottom of the paperwork that you have. We're now going to use that to collect the baby's blood. In certain circumstances, the blood will actually drip to the bottom of the baby's foot and then fall off. But most of the time with these heel sticks, they normally just become a drop at the puncture site. And that's what we are going to collect on our newborn screening paper, or if we were needing to use it to fill up our micro tainers. I'm just gonna use some food dye, this is not real blood, and pretty much it's going to be a drop and you're going to place the paper close to the baby's foot. You don't want the baby's foot to actually touch the paper, you just want it to catch the little drop of blood. You don't wanna have any contamination of the blood specimen. Normally one good drop of blood will be enough to fill the circles on the screening paper. It's very crucial to get that whole circle filled with blood. If not, then the test will come back rejected. If you feel that it is not enough, then you can always squeeze the baby's heel a little bit more just to get more to fill up that circle. And then you're gonna repeat the steps for the remainder of the little circles that we have to fill with blood. Here I'm just gonna show you certain positions that you can use to hold the baby's foot. It is up to you on what you feel comfortable. You're gonna learn different ways to hold the baby's foot in your training anyways, but like I said, it is up to you to feel comfortable in your own way. The baby's foot is normally going to be held in your non-dominant hand. So if you're a right-handed person and right with your right hand, then you will hold the baby's foot with your left hand. If you are dominant in your left hand, then you will hold the baby's foot with your right hand. Your dominant hand normally will move the paperwork or the micro retainer to catch the blood while your other non-dominant hand is holding the baby's foot. Always be sure not to be squeezing so hard so that you are not making the baby uncomfortable or that you are causing any type of pain or damage to the baby's foot or heel. Normally a good puncture with the lancet will give you a normal good blood flow. Once your newborn screening form is finished or your micro retainers are already filled, then you will grab a gauze pad and you will place it on the puncture site of the baby and you will hold and press until you are getting no more blood leaking out. The same way you would apply pressure from someone getting a regular blood draw, you will take the gauze pad and you will press the area. Sometimes the baby, you will notice it has not stopped bleeding. There is no longer any more blood. You are able to leave the baby like that or if you want to be safer on the safer side, then you can bandage the baby accordingly retainers are normally sent to the lab but the newborn screening tests do have to dry for at least two hours before it is placed in an envelope and then sent off Depending on where you work it will you will learn where the newborn screening test has to dry or if you give it to the healthcare staff like the baby's nurse or however or if it's something that you give back to the laboratory you will learn these things wherever you're working how they handle the newborn screening test after the specimen has been collected. There are just certain things that you do not do when performing a heel stick. You will never use a tourniquet at the ankle of a baby ever to do a heel stick. Any other needle besides the lancet is definitely a big no when it comes to doing heel sticks. You will never use a butterfly, a pediatric butterfly, anything like that. Your neonate patients and infant patients are just as important as any adult patient or adolescents or however. So you always wanna make sure that you are gentle. It is never fun to watch their little legs squirm or they cry and stuff. You know, you do have to really have a good emotional stability when dealing with your neonate patients. You know you're not there to injure the patient and the little baby. So always try to keep that in mind that this is something that will help them. It will determine 
what's going on with them in this brand new world that they're getting ready to explore. So never take it personal whenever you hear the baby cries. It can be a little disheartening because you're like, oh, I'm so sorry, but you're more than welcome to talk to your baby patients and however, even though they probably will not understand you, but always try to give them that comfort. Big ups to my three-year-old for being a big boy and actually letting mommy demonstrate on him. But I really hope this video was very helpful and helping anyone to at least understand what the hill six are like and what they're about and what we check for if this is something you may come across in your phlebotomy journey slash career you may be able to deal with infants and neonates and however certain jobs you may have to have extra training to be certified in that or however depending on where you work and even if not it is also good to always at least have the knowledge of what you need to do when it comes to heel sticks for future preferences but I thank you all for tuning in please like this video if you thought this video was very helpful and i'll see you all in my next video bye